what you see here is a seven segment display for a digital clock that I've created using Minecraft logic gates and while we still have daylight I will show you how this works. We have D flip flops, ten of them to be precise. They're all running off of an eleven clock. Which I'll show you over here. Here's the eleven clock. Basically what this does is it continues to run in a pulse fashion and it always has to be an odd number and 11 just happens to be when you lock your frame rate uh, one second in the real world and basically we take the pulse off this right here and it gets sent down through the flip-flops which I have the input set up these are D flip-flops as I stated each one is set up inverted of the um, clock and then true to the clock and then inverted to the clock and true to the clock as you see here and we also have an RS North latch. There's only one latch really necessary for this function. And what this latch does is just keeps track of the true and inverted um, rundown on the flip-flops, as you will see. And we also have here, um, from the flip-flops, their outputs that are being produced, which you can get a better view over here, a real nice one right here. This is the output on the, one of the flip-flops. This one is currently on and it's being sent through a repeater over here because the distance is going into these AND gates. And This is the encoder. We have 10 AND gates for the encoder and the encoder is actually sending 11 signals. One is the um, actual signal from the first flip-flop. You can hear the music which means the sun is starting to come down. And then I also have an inverted signal coming from the... this is coming down here which is then sent through another inverter to make it a repeater and this signal is being sent over here to send the um, actual signal as well to the actual AND gate. What will happen is the AND gate will turn this on when that turns off or turns this off when that turns off over here and it'll just cascade down basically when um, well I can better show you if I just turn on the clock um, but basically what happens is as the clock continues to build bits, ones, it will uh, move the overlay down so there's actually only one signal being sent out per um, flip-flop. That way it's not just building up ones. As you will see here, now that I have it going, it's going to get a little laggy here. And basically, you see the flip-flops are now um, starting to drop. Um, which means they'll start building here soon, which they did now, you see. And that's sending signal to this encoder. And basically the encoder will send it so that signal will be one here, but then when there, there's two bits with a one, then this one will be on and this one will be off. And that makes it easier for us to code. See how it's going now? This one's on now, now this one's on, now this one's on. And it'll just continue doing that. And then what will happen is the last D flip flop, which you see up here, over there, that's the second floor. When it reads on, you see it's on, it's sending the signal to that RS North latch to turn off its bit. So what it'll do is it'll start sending an off signal. Or when it's the last flip flop is on or um, off, then it'll send this signal to the RS North latch to say that it can start sending ones down through the flip flops. <laughs> Basically, this is an inverted, so when the flip-flops are off, this inverts the signal so it acts as though they're really turning on as they're turning off. And then it sends the encoded data down to the decoder for the seven-segment display, which is actually fairly large. It's two, two stories, actually. Um, third, if you count the top, is the roof. And here's this, the basement, really. This is when I started to get a little cleaner, as you can see, kind of figured out a more compact design. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, the only hiccup I ran into is in um, Minecraft, the logic gates are uh, pretty slow, and the AND gates, if you see here, maybe you'll get a chance to see it. You'll see that they're on. You're going to see them cascade off. And so what that means is that zero actually hangs for about two seconds. So what I did was I put an interrupt command that's connected to the two, one, two, and three. And that makes it so it runs more smoothly. Zero, one, two, three. As you see, it's running. Now, 
the cool thing about this design is when the tent flip flop sends a signal to the RS Norlatch to uh, send the uh, inverse of what iteration had just been done, all you simply have to do is use that tenth RS Norlatch as well to um, send a signal to another complete system. Um, this time only six flip-flops and um, six AND gates, as you can see here. And then that, what you can do is you can have that as your second decimal place, and you can accumulate as necessary. So it would be 10, then 6, then 10, then 6, then 12, if you wanted to set up a 12-hour clock. And then you could also set it up so that when that 12 hits, it's positive and then goes to its inverted 12, then it becomes a day, which would be 24 hours. So essentially, you can really build this up as far as you want to by simply adding on the next iterations. So just to kind of, um, you know, once again explain how that snaps in and show you where that would snap in. Uh, over here you uh, see the, this is the tenth flip-flop, D flip-flop. Um, it sends out its pulse signal over here, then it gets repeated because the distance is greater than 15 to that uh, RS Norlatch over there. And then you would just take this, and then you would also send this up to maybe the next floor, and then make that your six flip-flops, which would um, go across the next level. And it would be sending the flip-flops its pulse. And this pulse would, would invert and revert, or, you know, one and zero, in the correct uh, iterations for um, the one, and then the two, and then the three, and then the four, and then the five. And then finally it would be a zero again, but then that would be looking to carry over to the, to the hours or actually to the minutes, because this is seconds. So at 59, it would carry over to the to the zero for the second, zero for the second second, and then uh, one for the minute. And then it would continue the cycle again um, until it reached nine on the minutes. So that's pretty much all you'd have to do, and it's possible. I mean, this is the example of just a seven segment display being encoded and decoded. Um, you'll notice there's still a little hang time, but it's actually, you can set your clock to this. I mean. Um, sometimes there's server lag. This is actually on a multiplayer server. It's actually not too far from um, Venomator's uh, mine um, roller coaster, minecart roller coaster that he, he's built, and it's pretty awesome. Like seven or eight minute track, pretty cool. Goes through snow and whatnot. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it right now. I'm planning on building it up. Um, this was really just like a test in theory. I pretty much had to do all the logic on my own. Didn't find anybody that would really had done anything like it. Um, so there may be more efficient ways out there, and if people know that, I like, would really appreciate you putting me in the right direction. But really everything you see here is really a product of my mind and a little bit of the Wikipedia help on uh, logic gate functions or creations in Redstone. But that's pretty much it. Um, I appreciate you guys checking it out. Let me know if you have any feedback. Mm -hmm.